hoping that uh, Mr. Lewis, can you discuss the relationship between digital redlining and competition? And aside from reducing costs, in what ways can people benefit from having increased competition among providers in their area? Sure, uh, Ms. Rochester, where we see little competition, I think we're more likely to see digital redlining where a company may choose not to serve or, or sometimes digital redlining isn't just that they choose not to serve a neighborhood, but they simply don't upgrade uh, the, the infrastructure there uh, to get the newer high quality broadband speeds and, and reliable networks. So um, competition hopefully will drive uh, them to want to serve those areas um, in order to get the subscribers uh, that are there. Um, this is happening in uh, urban and rural communities uh, and tribal communities, but it's really sad when it happens when in, when it happens in urban communities uh, where there is the density, but simply not the value placed on those specific neighborhoods. Great, thank you. And in preparing for today's hearing, my staff was really unable to gather sufficient data on broadband access because the information is not made public. Um, I'm proud to have supported the Broadband Data Act to require the FCC to reform their existing broadband deployment maps, but we also need more public data on broadband pricing, speeds, and adoption. Ms. Ocillo, in your testimony, you stress the need for better and more data as we work together to address the digital